Okay, just a quick uh, recap. I'm sure all of you uh, uh, know this. So what, what's an online algorithm? So we get, uh, <coughs> we have, a, we have a, some optimization problem. We don't get all the input in advance, but rather we get <coughs> at, at every point of, at any point of time, we get a request sigma i and we have to serve it. We cannot go, go back and change the, and change the, and change our response. And the competitive factor is determined in hindsight for a particular sequence. We look at, at the performance of our online algorithm compared to, uh, to an optimal algorithm that knows, that knows the future. And if for every sequence we can say that the, the ratio between the cost of the algorithm, the online algorithm, and the cost of the optimal algorithm, algorithm is at most alpha, then um, plus some additive term which is not dependent on the request sequence, then the competitive ratio is alpha deterministically and randomized compared to an oblivious adversary, we're looking at the expected cost of the, of the algorithm. So my talk will focus on problems that are related to paging k-server. So um, let me just remind you of, uh, of the settings. So we have a hierarch hierarchical uh, memory. Uh, a small fast memory, the cache, which has size k, and some large universe n, k is much smaller than n. We get a, 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 a sequence of requests for pages. If the page is in the cache, no problem. There's no, uh, no cost incurred. Otherwise, we have to bring in the page from the cache. That costs us one unit. And the decision we have to make is which page to evict. Maybe the next request would be to the page that we just evicted. And we want to, so we want to, mini, we want to minimize the total number of, uh, of cache, uh, cache misses. So this is kind of a very fundamental problem in, in competitive analysis, has been studied from every possible angle. Um, deterministically, uh, there's a, a lower bound of k on the competitive factor, and LRU and a bunch of other algorithms are, are indeed k competitive. In the randomized setting, there's a classical algorithm called uh, marking, which improves, by, improves the deterministic factor by an exponential factor and achieves a log k competitive factor, and this is, uh, this is tight. We can further generalize the, the paging problem to the weighted paging setting where, um, <clears throat> where, every page, where every page i has some weight associated with it and this is the cost of loading the page into, uh, into the cache. And now instead of minimizing the, the number of misses, we want to minimize the total cost or total weight of the, of the cache misses. And again, in the, in the, in the uh, deterministic case, one can achieve a K. There is a K competitive algorithm and um, the same bound that we have for, un for the unweighted case also holds for the, the, the log K, also holds for the, for the weighted case. This was actually an open problem for many years until it was resolved about a little over 10 years ago. Uh, the main tool for dealing with uh, at least the randomized, the randomized algorithm for, for weighted paging is working with a fractional version. So uh, typically, and this is true not only for, for paging, we find a deterministic fractional algorithm and then convert it into an integral randomized algorithm. So. Uh, fractional paging, we keep in the cache <coughs> fractions of pages, but these fractions cannot add up to more than, more than k. And uh, the page which is currently requested has to, be fully, has to be fully in the cache. So if the current requested uh, page 
is only, only one fourth of it is in the cash, then um, we have to pay three to, to load it to, to satisfy the current request. We have to pay three quarters times the weight of the cost of the, of the page. Uh, let's continue and look at um, uh, generalizations of paging, which, which, which is called the k-server problem. So we have a metric space with n points. Think of it in paging, it's the set of all possible pages. And k is the number of servers that the algorithm uh, controls. Now suppose this tree is our metric space. We have two servers at these two leaves. Now we get a request, a request at this leaf. What this means is that we have to move a server over to that leaf. So this server goes there. Now we get another request at the leftmost leaf. And again, we'll have to move one of the two servers over there. And the, our cost is the total distance which is moved by, uh, moved by, the, by the servers. And uh, so what's the re relationship to paging? Well, paging is just k server on a uniform metric. Uh, every, every possible page is a point in the metric space. And the servers indicate which pages are in the cache. And weighted, pages, pa weighted paging is just k server on a weighted, uh, on a weighted star. Please uh, feel free to, to interrupt, ask questions, uh, etc. Um, okay, so some results. So we saw for paging we have tight in the deterministic setting, k lower bound and k upper bound for for k for k server on a general metric. Um, there was a long list of, of results. I'll just, min, uh, I'll just mention the, the last one. Uh, two, two K minus one competitive algorithm and lower bound of K. This is from 95. The lower bound is from paging. And since 95, this gap has remained between K and uh, two K minus one. And the randomized setting, well, we already, I already mentioned the log k for both paging and weighted paging. Um, the, there, is a, there is a conjecture, the, the weighted, uh, uh, sorry, the randomized uh, k server conjecture, which says that one can get a log k competitive, O of log k competitive algorithm for any metric space. Uh, until the uh, one one uh, breakthrough result was in 2011, and that achieved log cube n times log square k for for a general metric. Uh, now, <coughs> this this almost resolves the problem, but not quite because of the dependency on n, which we don't want to depend in the. In the, we don't want to have this dependency in the, uh, in the competitive uh, factor. Uh, another breakthrough result was recently, a year ago, by Bubek et al. They considered a special type of a tree called HST, hierarchically well-separated tree. I'll explain what that is in a, in a minute. And they managed to achieve log, log square k uh, competitive factor for this kind of tree. The previous result of Bunsal et al. still had a log n factor even for, uh, for an HST. There's a dependence of the depth. And, uh, and uh, soon after, a result by James Lee, which showed how to go from an HST to a, to a general uh, metric and achieve a polylog in K factor for, uh, for, a, general, uh, for a general metric. What, what I'm going to show with not too many details is how to get a different approach to getting the log square K a factor on, on an HST and matching the same competitive factor as the Bubek et al. Uh, result. Okay, so we're now in the, our setting is the K, K server problem 
on a, on a tree, or, or I mean on a, on a general metric, but I, I'm going to restrict myself to an HST. So a, an HST is a balanced tree where the weight go down by a factor of, let's say, at least two when going down from the root on a path to, uh, to a leaf. And the advantage of working with an HST is, on an HST life is, life is easier on one hand. On the other hand, we can go from a general metric uh, we can embed a general metric in an HST, a probabilistic embedding, and lose a factor of, of log n. Now, this is, of course, a problem if we want our competitive factor uh, to depend only, only on k. However, the result of James Lee that I just mentioned uh, loses in, in the context of k-server, only uh, a polylog in k factor. And the reason is that he's doing a, not an oblivious embedding, but a dynamic embedding, which depends on the request sequence. So this is one, one relaxation, looking at, it, at an HST. Another one is that we're, go, uh, we're going to consider the k-server problem in the fractional setting. So now servers, you can keep a fraction of a server in a, in a, in a leaf, in the, in, in the HST. And, but however, for the leaf or for the node where we have the request, a full server has to, has to be there. And then the, the, the cost is just moving the, uh, the cost of moving the fractions that we decide to move in, in the tree. And uh, in, the, in the Bansal et al. paper, <coughs> they presented a rounding algorithm, so an online rounding algor algorithm. So if we have a fractional algorithm with competitive factor of x, of x, then we can, on, a, on an HST, then we can round it into a randomized integral algorithm and lose only a, a, an O of 1 factor. And this, this can be done online. So this means that we can restrict ourselves to, deter, to working deterministically with a fractional solution. Any, any questions? Okay. So let me tell you a little bit about the Bubek et al. paper. So um, we are going to think about an online problem uh, in, in, a, um, geometric, in a geometric setting. So we have a bunch of, uh, of constraints through which we define our, our problem. Let's say it's a polytop, which is defined by some linear program. And however, the linear program is revealed to us one, one constraint or a group of constraints, one after, one after the other. So um, we have some polytop. And let's say that at point, at time t, we have a vector xt, and this vector is going to be is going to tell us where the servers are in the tree. And now we need to serve, uh, to serve our request. And uh, our service is xt plus 1. This is where we want to, this is the solution that we're going to go. What, what Bubik et al. did was define some continuous time uh, um, uh, trajectory defined by mirror descent in this polytop, and there's some differential equation which is going to give this, uh, this trajectory. I want to show a different approach, I can say discretization, but it will be via projection. So we'll, we'll project ourselves from, from this point to, uh, to this point. Um, now, the projection is going to be defined by uh, Bregman, di Bregman divergence. So we know, just uh, a reminder, um, 
so for every uh, for every convex function f, the uh, the above inequality holds. So if we want to evaluate a point y via the uh, gradient at x, then this inequality, the function at y, is bigger than or equal to the function f of x plus the inner product between the gradient and y, y minus x. And the distance, once we, for, for a given function f, the Bregman distance is defined by this error. It's always non-negative. It's not necessarily symmetric. And um, I mean, this is defined for any function f. Two very common choices are, one is the kullback leibler the entropy function, negative entropy function. And the other one is the squared Euclidean uh, distance. So this is the Bregman distance that I'm going to, uh, to use. And it has a very nice property that you can, given a convex set, you can project, uh, when we have a point outside, let's say point X, we can project it onto the, onto the set, this, this convex uh, set C. And to, to compute the projection, we'd, all we need to do is compute a solution to a convex program because the Bregman divergence is a convex uh, function. And another nice property is the, a generalized Pythagorean theorem, and it says the following. X is our point outside the, the convex set, the polytop. This X proj is the projection of X onto, the, uh, on, onto this, uh, the set C, which is computed by this convex program. And the Pythagorean theorem says that the distance from y to x, the Bregman distance from y to x, is bigger than equal to the distance from y to the, projection, to the projected point, plus the distance from the projected point to x. And this is going to be very useful in analyzing uh, our, our algorithm. OK, so let me define in in general, the, the projection-based uh, based algorithm. I'll talk about it in the context of K-Server, but it's applicable to, in principle, to any, any online problem. So we have our base, uh, our base polytop, K. So in the case of paging, for example, the base polytop would say that the number of uh, pages in the cache is no more than uh, no more than k. And now uh, we get a request at time at time t. And now this is the part of the of the base of the base polytop, which includes the request the, the requested page. So the requested page has to be in the cache. And this is kt, and this is our so, and, and we have some solution x xt. Now we get a time t plus one, a new request. So this changes the current polytop kt plus one, and now we have to serve the request. How do we do it? Now remember that we are in the fractional setting. So we have some fractional solution which describes the contents of the, of the cache. And now we need to find another fractional solution which would include the requested page at time t plus 1. And this is done by computing a projection from xt to xt plus 1 by through a Bregman divergence. I'll say immediately what is the, what is the function. So this is the algorithm. At any point of time, find a projection from the previous, from the previous point xt to the new point xt plus 1, which is, which is in the feasible region of, uh, of the solutions, which in the case of paging includes the current, current request. What do you call it? Your polygon was that sigma xi equals 1 equals k? 
L uh, less than or equal to. Uh, give me one, one minute, uh, one second even. <laughs> okay, so the, the, di the distance is going to be defined by, by variance of, the K, of KL, KL divergence. And, um, and the, answering your question, the mo in, in, the case of, in the case of paging or, or case server, um, let's say 0, 1 is my, is my solution, and I, I don't have more than k servers or k pages in the cache. It's not going to be as simple, uh, as, simple as that. And the, the, k, the, the part which is feasible has to include the current request, so this means that x t of the requested point is equal to uh, is equal to one, and this is the part of the feasible region of the base of the base polytop. Now, um, the Bregman the Bregman divergence that we're going to use so for the star graph or for uh, 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 paging, it's it's just the entropy uh, entropy function plus linear linear terms. Um, for an HST, it's a bit more involved. It's going to be some multi-level version of, uh, of KL. So actually what happens is that for, um, even for paging, we, can't work, we have to switch the roles of 0 and 1. So 0 has to be, uh, 0 means that the page is in the cache, 1 means that it's not in the cache, and then the inequality is in this, uh, in this direction. I'll talk a little bit later why this has to be done, why this has to be done, but one, one reason is that this is a covering, this is a covering constraint and we know how to work with covering constraints. Uh, and then zero means that the page, the requested page, is in the, in the cache. And now there's some technical complications and actually we can't work with zero and we have to work the zero is actually, um, a page is in the cache if its value is one or less than or equal to uh, one over k. Okay, let me switch gears and tell you about a problem. Suppose at every point of time we get, we have our set of variables and we get covering, uh, covering constraints and so covering constraints are just constraints where, you, where all the coefficients are non-negative and it's bigger than or equal to something. For example, set cover problem, we have elements, they belong to sets and let's say at every point of time we get an, ele an, an element and that element has to be covered which means that the sum covered fractionally which means that the sum of the fractions of the of the sets containing the elements is at least is at least one but suppose we get not just a single but we get a bunch of covering constraints and we also get a service cost so if we first the the covering constraints define the feasible region and at any point of at, at every point of the feasible region there's also a service cost so this this problem captures both uh, an online version of the set cover problem which I'll I'll talk in a few minutes and the, another classic problem in online, uh, in, in online algorithms, which is called MTS, metrical task systems, where we have to, uh, at every point of time, we, um, we have to serve a request in a, in, a metrics, in a metric space, and at every point in the metric space there is a different service cost, and if we are at a point where it's expensive to serve, and, and there's some other point where it's, uh, uh, where it's much cheaper, then we can go, our server can go to that point, but we have to pay the distance from our current point to where we want to serve the request. Another way of thinking about the MTS pro uh, problem is that it's the 
competitive analysis version of experts, where we can go from one expert to another, but we have to pay for that. Anyway, in MTS, the feasible region is fixed. Sum of xi, the, frac the sum of the fractions of, the, of a server at the points of the metric space is is at most one or equal equal to one, and uh, uh, so we have in MTS we have service cost and we have a fixed region. Um, in general, we could have both both covering constraints and and a service cost. So at every point of time, we get a, a feasible region. We have to move into it. Let's say initially we were at zero, so we this was y zero. So we had we have to pay y one minus y zero plus the service cost at at uh, y one. Now we get the new feasible region. We have to move inside, and again we pay our movement cost plus the service cost. Now we get a new uh, a new point. Y3, which is actually inside the feasible region which we had before, so we are feasible. However, let's say Y2, the new service cost for Y2 is expensive, so we move to, uh, to, y, uh, to Y3. So this is a problem that was considered a few years ago in the, in the literature, and actually the, the, this was already solved via, via projections. That's why I mentioned, said it's a new old t uh, technique. And the, the projection was done very similarly to what, uh, to what I presented earlier by adding a regular, regularizer, the negative Shannon entropy to the objective function, and then projecting. And the analysis was via, via duality. Also, paging was already analyzed also using the negative Shannon uh, uh, entropy. Okay, so um, let me, to, to, to get, to make things more tangible, uh, let, me, let me go to a very simple setting and explain how, how projections work there and then go back to, uh, to K-Server. So the problem I want to talk about is an online version of set cover, and let's say it's unweighted, so all sets have cost of weight, weight of one. At every point of time, we get a new element. X defines as a vector which says which, which sets are in our solution, and AT is just the, the characteristic vector of the sets uh, to which the new element that needs to be covered uh, uh, be belongs to. So we get a new element, AT, at a time T we get a new element which needs to be covered, AT denotes the vector of sets to which the element belongs to. And now we have our solution X. Uh, it needs to be uh, uh, the inner product between X and AT has to be bigger than or equal to 1, meaning that our solution X indeed covers the, the new element. Now another, since it's an online problem, uh, of course, we need to maintain feasibility for all previous elements that were requested. This is one, one requirement. Another requirement is monotonicity. We don't want to allow the solution to, to change. I mean, now we, we, we have taken a, a fraction of half from one set, and in the next step, it goes down to one-fourth then we lose the online nature of the problem. So the online nature of the problem is captured by the requirement of monotonicity, that we can only, we're, we're not allowed to decrease a fraction, only to increase it. Okay, so, um, so at, at any point of time, 
we have our solution xt, which is in the uh, uh, polytop kt, which is exactly these, these, uh, these constraints. And the cost is, of course, by how much we have increased our, our solution. Okay, let's see how uh, a quick lower bound on, on this problem. Suppose initially we get this inequality. Well, we have n variables indicating the sets. Our element belongs to all of them. What would we do? Whatever we do, one of these variables is going to have value of, a fractional value of 1 over n, right? Let's call it x1. I'm not going to touch it any, as an adver adversary, I'm not going to touch it anymore. Now I'll give you x2 plus x3 up to xn. At least one of them is 1 over n minus 1, right? Let's call it x2, and so on. So the cost of our solution is 1 over n plus 1 over n minus 1 plus 1 over n minus 2, etc. So it's the harmonic number log n. Um, opt can just set xn to be equal to 1. So we, clearly we cannot get better than log n. Now let's see how we can indeed get, get log n. So pictorially, how does the projection-based algorithm work? We get our new, uh, our new request. This is where, we're, where we currently are. Now we get our new request, and we do a projection onto the new, uh, the new request, the new polytop, and so on. So this is, this is uh, yeah, this is the algorithm. We just do projections at every, uh, at every step. Now let's see the analysis. And the projection is with respect to the entropy function. So this is how the Bregman divergence is defined. So it's just a solution to this uh, convex program. xt minus 1 is our previous solution. And we just project it onto kt, the, feas the current feasible region. And this is how we get our point xt, which minimizes this projection with respect to the Bregman distance with the entropy, uh, entropy function. OK, I'm going to prove that the algor our algorithm is log n competitive uh, plus an additive, uh, plus an additive uh, 1. So we, we're not going to pay more than log n times opt. OK, uh, so this is our, this is our um, convex program which computes, which computes the, the projection. Now, since this is a convex program, let's look at the Lagrangian. The Lagrangian is written here. And if we do the KKT conditions, we take the derivatives with respect to xi, and they're all equal to zero at the optimal solution, then we get this equality, which gives us this connection between xit and xit minus 1. Now, if you look at this, at this equality, the term that we have here is at least, is at least 1, because lambda is, is uh, non-negative, and each a, each, each entry a, is uh, 0 or one. So we get that our solution is monotone non-decreasing for free. So this means that we can just, if we use this algorithm, we can just concentrate on the last request. We don't have to worry about monotonicity with respect to the previous, 
to the previous uh, 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 request or, or elements to be, to be covered. This is one observation. Another one, what does this tell, tell us about the relation between x t and x t minus 1? This is exactly multiplicative updates. It's not very surprising because uh, the entropy function is related to multiplicative updates. Let's step aside for a moment and let's uh, go over the original online set cover algorithm which was given, uh, which was given in 05 and there the algorithm was multiplicative update in a more explicit way. So we take our, we get a new, uh, we have to, um, we get a new element to be, to be covered. And now we look at all the sets which contain it and we do multiplicative updates proportionally uh, inverse to the cost of the, this is the, the, the weighted version, to the cost of the, of the set. The analysis here was uh, analyzing the, what is the ratio between the primal and dual, uh, and the dual solutions. So we're, uh, we're also generating a dual solution together. Now what's really happening here this is just a, a manual way of computing the projection as opposed to doing it with a, with a convex program. Now this is simple when we have just one, at each point of time we have just one constraint to be satisfied. That recall that problem where we had both several covering constraints and um, and service cost, then it, it gets much more complicated and then when you have many constraints, you, projections is the, is the way to go. Okay, let's finish the analysis of the, of the online set cover. So, um, let's define, let, it's going to be a, a classic potential-based argument. So, Let's define the following potential function. So it's, it's just the entropy function, uh, relative entropy. So y is, our, is, is some optimal integer solution and x is our, the fractional solution that the, our algorithm is generating. And this is the potential function. And let's see, what does the Pythagorean uh, uh, inequality tell us about the, about the potential function? So remember, y is some arbitrary point, feasible point, that's the optimal integer solution. x is our solution from the previous iteration. x projection is the projection of our, our solution. And the generalized Pythagorean uh, theorem gives us this inequality, uh, uh, this, this, this inequality on the Bregman uh, distances, which are only different from the potential function in the linear terms. And, and since the linear terms cancel, we get this, uh, this inequality on the, on the potential function and this is going to be the main tool for analyzing the, the algorithm. Okay, so to analyze the solution with a potential function, at every point of time we need to show that when opt moves the potential function grows by at most c times the change in the cost of opt and when alg moves the change in, uh, in cost of alg is bounded by minus the change in phi. And if that happens when we add up uh, with a potential function the, the cost of opt and the algorithm we get we get that the algorithm is C-competitive. This is all um, 
uh, constant terms that do not depend on the, on the request sequence. Okay, so what value of C can we get? So when opt, when opt moves, let's say opt sets yi, if opt doesn't do anything, then the potential, there's no change in potential. Um, suppose opt uh, sets some yi to be equal to 1, so opt pays 1. What, how does this affect the, the potential function? Well, this is the change in potential. This term goes to 0. Remember that every xi, I forgot to say that, our initial solution is we give 1 over n to every, to every set. Forgot to mention that. That's why we get the plus 1, because 1 over n times n sets is equal to 1. So a priori we pay, we pay 1. So xi is 1 over n, and we get here log n. So this, this term is bounded by log n, so we get that c equals log n suffices for, uh, for opt. So this is for the movement of opt. Now, um, for the online algorithm, well, we need to show that the change of cost of alg is upper bounded by minus delta phi. So this is, the, this is our picture. We, we were at point xt minus 1, and we projected onto xt. The cost of the algorithm is just the difference between xit and xit minus 1. We know that this, by monotonicity, this is, there, there are no negative terms. This is upper bounded by the entropy function because Actually, many ways of seeing that, among others, because this is the Bregman divergence, and it's always non-negative. And this is equal to our potential function, but remember the inequality, the, what the Pythagorean theorem implied about the potential function, it, it, it just says, okay. It just says that it, the, 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 the potential of uh, the potential function uh, x t with the distance from the potential between x t and x t minus one is upper bounded by this term. But what is this term? Well, this is the potential y. Remember, opt is already served, so we are at y t. So we have yt with respect to xt minus 1 minus yt with respect to xt, the current, the current potential, and this is exactly minus delta phi. So we've shown that the change in cost of the algorithm is bounded by the potential, uh, potential function, change in potential function. Um, okay, so this... Uh, this concludes, uh, this concludes the proof, and we see that we get a log n competitive algorithm for, for online set cover, um, uh, which matches the lower bound that we just seen. This, uh, a, a competitive algorithm in this setting was given earlier, actually originally in 03, and later on a primal, uh, an online primal dual proof, and this was actually, uh, this was actually the basis for giving uh, uh, an online primal uh, uh, setting uh, uh, and analysis for many other uh, online problems. Um, okay, now let's go back to, uh, to K-Server. So one issue with uh, with K server, what constraints are we going uh, are we going to have? So what would be the what would be the natural LP? The natural LP is so I'm talking about an HST. We have a tree. All the action happens at the leaves. So the leaves denote the original metric space, so we get requests 
at the leaves and all our servers are defined on the uh, on the uh, on the on the leaves we have some fractional vector on on the leaves so we could have um, we could have an L, uh, LP, a set of constraints, which says at the point of service we need to have a, we need to have a, ser, uh, a server, uh, a server. So x is equal to one. Total they add up to at most uh, to at most k. And once the leaves, the, the, the servers at the leaves are defined, that actually tells us what are the number of leaves at every, uh, at every uh, uh, internal point of the tree. And at the top, at the root, we have k, uh, k servers. That's our total number. Turns out that this is actually a bad LP. As I defined it, actually, um, it's very easy to cheat and uh, and move move opt can move servers without um, without paying without paying for that. So we also need another constraint x less than or equal to uh, to one. This turns out to be first. This turns out to be a problematic constraint to work with. And also having these large numbers in the internal nodes is also, is also problematic. And one uh, really beautiful observation of Bubek et al. is su suggestion of, an, of a different LP. And what they have said, and this is the LP that we work with, they also of course uh, worked with, uh, so in the leaf, every atom corresponds to uh, to a server. In the internal nodes, so these are the, our atoms. In the internal nodes, we have atoms. With, the number of atoms is equal to the number to the number of leaves. Now, it is in this LP. Uh, it is not the case that once you know the leaves, then this gives you the solution for the, for the inter internal nodes. But rather, uh, in the 0, 1 case, the root is defined to B. So, so let's, let's do the switch. 0 is a server, 1 is not a server. So in the root, we have k zeros initially, and then n minus k ones, okay? Because that's fixed, we have k servers. Um, in every internal node, we have the following inequality. Think of an integral solution as one, one in which the atoms are sorted, in every internal node, the atoms are sorted First we have the zeros, and then we have the ones. So if we look at the subset S, so we are, let's say, we are here, and we're looking at these, at these two atoms, and this atom, which have a common parent with three, with three atoms, then our constraint is the following, the sum of the first, let's say, uh, cardinality, uh, Cardinal, we're looking at a subset of cardinality S, then let's say cardinality of S is L. The first L entries at the parent node, which is this, is no more than the sum of the servers at the atoms in the set S. So here we're looking at, the, and this, this is a valid inequality because uh, here we're looking at the first L entries, which are the smallest ones, and here we're just looking at an arbitrary set of, of, the, same, of the same cardinality. And this LP, one advantage of this LP is that it first it saves on having these upper bounds, which are difficult to work with, and second of all, it takes us back 
to the, to the zero one world, which is again easier to work with when using the, the entropy function. And our Bregman divergence is just this a weighted sum of the levels in the, in the, in the tree. Now, uh, there are several difficulties that we have to work with. So one is working, we have to move to the anti-server wor world where server me is zero and non-server is one. And the reason is that this way we get covering constraints, which are easy to, uh, to, uh, to work with. Uh, if you remember, another, another nice, nice property of the constraints that we just saw is that um, we know how to work with covering constraints and we know how to work with constraints of the type x less than or equal to y. The constraints that we have here, those the constraints that they try to convince you that are feasible are, um, they're not precedence constraint, but they're constraints of the type sigma x less than or equal to some sigma y, but it's not arbitrary x's and y's, but they're defined by the tree structure, and this, this also make, this is a nice generalization of going from precedence constraints. Um, we have here uh, many more dual or Lagrange uh, variables and we relate what's happening in adjacent levels of the tree using KKT and uh, complementary slackness. It turns out to be more complicated than in, uh, in the set cover example. Another technical issue is that we, because of the entropy function we can't go down to zero we have to stop it. So 1 over k is actually our 0. That also creates some technical difficulties. The Pythagorean theorem by itself is not, is not sufficient. We have to, to add some dual variables to... Uh, uh, and this is the theorem that we get. Um, Finally, uh, so when working in the case of, uh, of uh, K-server, the, getting the bound of depth, depth of the tree times log K, that turns out to be fairly clean. Uh, the proof goes uh, as, as, uh, as pretty nice. Replacing the depth by by log k, that requires more work and working with uh, another another potential function. But the proof is pretty uh, is pretty modular. Um, so to finish, um, I showed you a, a general method based on projections for, for online algorithm. It seems very suitable for paging, k-server, and more generally problems where we have covering constraints plus more constraints, precedents or generalized precedents. It would be very interesting to see. Uh, it gets log square k for an HST. And it would be very nice to uh, to see how it generally how it can work with uh, with other problem for other problems. Um, one obvious uh, open question is uh, improve. I would improve the log square k to uh, to log k, uh, and then how and then how can we use projections when we work on a general metric and not and not on a not on a tree, and of course using projections for other uh, for other online problems. Thank you.